Hello, it's Sid Roth here with Katie Sousa, and we're going to be discussing a subject that very few people have heard. It's called the spirit of death. Katie, what is the spirit of death? Is that when you're just dying? No, the spirit of death is, is active in the world at every moment. He's putting death on people's bodies. He's causing rapid aging. He's causing disease disorder. He's also killing off finances and marriages and relationships. And Sid, honestly, I believe that when we transition to heaven uh, as a born again believer, that we just do that. We lay down at God's appointed time and we just transition to our place in glory. If the spirit of death is in the room at the time of our death, it usually means that were dying of a disease or something that was not the will of God. You battled the spirit of death. I did. It almost cost you your life. Tell yeah. me about that battle. He came into my room. I was sick at the time, and I actually heard his audible voice. He said my name out loud, and I said, who is that, Lord? And he said, it's the spirit of death. He's on assignment to kill you. And almost immediately, I went into menopause. My body started reacting. I started having hot flashes, severe ones. I started gaining weight. In fact, I gained eight pounds of belly fat within a week. My hair started getting dry and brittle. Uh, my skin, I saw rapid aging happening to my skin. I started getting baggy and saggy and wrinkly. And every part of my life, I started having chronic pain in my body. And then the spirit of death didn't just stop at my body. He went after the rest of my life. He went after my marriage. 15 years, my husband and I had the biggest battle of our marriage. Then he went after my ministry. He took out four of my top employees, cut off our financial support, went after personal friends of mine. I I had four people in my life, Sid, very close to me who were killed by the spirit of death. Then he even took the lives of my dogs. Two of my dogs died within a couple weeks of each other. What gave the spirit of death the legal right to come after you and your, your possessions? That was my exact question when death came after me. And the Holy Spirit began to answer me with systematic uh, Bible verses and scriptures connecting to each other. First, it's our law breaking. The Bible says that when we break the laws of God, it gives death the right to attack even our bodily organs. I mean, that is in Romans 7, 5 in the Amplified Classic. It says when our law breaking or our sin comes, that it causes death to be able to constantly operate in our bodily organs so that we bear fruit for death. I mean, think about that. We have 78 organs in our body. Uh, the doctors say that our skin is actually called an organ and it's the biggest organ in our body. So we wonder, why are we having wrinkles and sagging and bagging and all of this stuff? Why are we having rapid aging? Because we break the law. Now, when I say that, Sid, I want to make sure everybody knows for certain that the law is not bad. Romans talks about how the law is holy. The commandment is holy, righteous, and good. The law is perfect. It's the righteous standard of God. It is. And so it's not the law that it's at fault. The Bible also says that our flesh is too weak to keep the whole law. In fact, James 2.10 says it's impossible. There's no way that we can perfectly keep the law because when we offend in one area, we, we break it all. We break all the law. And that is what's giving the spirit of death to have the right to attack our bodily organs, to attack our skin, our, our, our muscles, our strength, and also the rest of our, our lives, any area of our life. So what can we do to stop this? Well, first, we need to build a deeper relationship with Jesus. I want you to think about it. The Bible says that Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. And the Bible also says that Jesus, through his death, he took away the power from the one who had the power of death, that is the devil. See, we can't do it by wishing it away or even do it on our own ability. We have to rely on Jesus. He's the one that has destroyed death for us. And the Bible also says that he fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law on our behalf. He did something we could never do. So we have to have a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus. And I'm not just talking about going to church on Wednesday or Sunday and thinking that's good enough. I'm talking about abiding in him, abiding and tearing in him, waiting for him, building a deeper relationship every single day where, we're, where we are relying on him. Think about what Jesus said in John 15. He said that I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me will produce much fruit. He who doesn't will be like a branch 
that gets cut off withers and dries up. So think about that. It's like when we abide in Jesus, which means to continue, to tarry, to wait on, we will produce much fruit, fruit in every area, including fruit for youth restored, fruit for life. I mean, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the bread of life. I came to give you life and life abundant. He said all these things about himself. So when we're connected to the vine, we will produce the fruit of life and revive youth and restored youth. But when we don't, we become like the branch that's literally cut off and it withers and dies. How did you defeat all these enemies that were drawn in by the spirit of death? Well, I'm telling you, the first thing I did was repent. Because when we break the law of God, we need to have repentance. 1 John 1, 9 says that God is faithful to forgive us of our sins when we repent and confess our sins. So as soon as we repent, those charges of us breaking the law get dismissed. And then what happens is the spirit of death has to leave. He has to start produ stop producing fruit in our bodily organs, including rapid aging and disease and disorder. Okay, so you repent. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, here's the thing. We have to repent, but we also have to put ourselves under grace. It's not one or the other like many people mm -hmm. teach. It's both. Because the Bible says when our sins of law breaking increase and abound, that grace surpasses it, meaning our law breaking, and superabounds over it. So you're saying if we repent, we still don't have the ability to get rid of that habit. Well, here's why I but say the grace that. Grace. Grace is like an umbrella. It is, is the miracle. Yeah, see, it's like we're building a divine protection, a divine canopy of protection against the enemy. But, but the grace can't come in if you don't repent. That's right. You have to do grace and repentance. There's a scripture in Matthew 5 4 that talks about when we will receive and be refreshed by God's grace when we mourn over our sins and repent. Our Repentance releases grace. So when we repent of our sins, it dismisses our law breaking. And when we release grace, it, it causes this like Holy Spirit bubble to come around us that the enemy cannot penetrate. So he cannot continue to keep on accusing us of our law breaking in order to put the spirit of death to work in our bodies. Now, did this spirit of death just leave? Or uh, what happened to all these conditions that were going on in your life? As I kept on with just getting in the presence of Jesus, just worshiping him, his authority over death began to be released. Anytime I messed up, I went right away to repent so my, the, my lawlessness would be dismissed. As I did that and kept on decreeing grace scriptures, it's like I built a thicker and thicker bubble of divine protection around me. And then one by one, step by step, Death started to withdraw his actions, his operation in my body, on my ministry, on my marriage, on every part of my life. And pretty soon, everything was being systematically restored. I was starting to get younger, starting to feel better. My marriage got better and better. Our finances. What, what do you mean by younger? Younger. I mean, I see people today. In fact, I just went in and saw my facialist for the first time in years. I, I don't get professional things done to me anymore because I'm waiting for that supernatural. I'm relying on the supernatural and that's what's happening. I walked in to see her the other day because I thought, well, maybe I'll get a little facial before I go to SIDS. She looked at me, she goes, I can't believe it. And I said, what? She goes, you look so much younger than you did even 10 years ago when I first met you. And I said, it's, it's the Lord, it's uh, the Lord. You, you know, one of the things that you're, you're hearing this and you're kind of questioning it, I was amazed at the scriptures you found to support what you're mm. saying. Tell us a couple. Well, you know, here's the thing. Jesus, he defeated death. Grace defeats death and repentance. There's a story in Job 33. You and I talked about it. You said you love this scripture. Of this guy, he's so sick. It says he's in continual pain on his bed, right? His bones are sticking out. His flesh is clinging to his body. And the Bible tells us why this was happening to him. In that Job 33 scriptures, it says that he was under the assault of the, quote, inflictors of death, the destroyers. Mm. So it was death that was doing that to him, the spirit of death. Okay, so what does God do about it? Next verses, it says, then God is 
gracious to him. Gracious, that's the power of grace. For he has said, deliver this man from the pit. I have given him an atonement, a price of redemption, and a sacrifice. That's Jesus. And because of that, then his flesh shall become fresher than a child's, and he shall return to the days of his youth. Yeah, you know, Katie has researched these scriptures, but this is something I've always wondered. Moses, Caleb, they were elderly men, mm. and their strength wasn't abated. Even their eyesight didn't even fade. Uh, they somehow knew this secret. Yes, they did. I mean, the devil even fought over Moses' body. Think about that. Why did he want to do that? Probably wanted to look into how he stayed so young. And Caleb gives us the answer. Remember, it says that when they went into the Promised Land, that Caleb went to Joshua and said, okay, I'm 85 years old. I want my inheritance. Because 45 years ago, uh, Moses told me that my inheritance was the, the hill country of Hebron, which is where the Anakin, the giants, lived, okay? and he and he told Joshua, he said, I'm 85 now, but I'm just as strong as I was back then 45 years ago. In fact, I'm just as strong going into battle as I am coming out of battle. Now, what was his secret? He's an 85-year-old in a 45-year-old's body. What's his secret? He was from the tribe of Judah. It's praise. See, when we praise, when we worship, it brings in the okay. glory. Now, tell me that very briefly, uh, and this is outrageous, uh, the woman with the dead bones. Okay, there was a woman named Terry Woods. I'm I'm in uh, Oregon with Steve Schultz. I'm doing a conference. The power shows up, and I'm walking in this revelation already over the spirit of death. I say, whoever got a miracle now, because I started operating in miracles, I said, come up to the front. And you can watch this on YouTube. Every video, every miracle we've ever had is on YouTube. Okay, so she comes up. Her name is Terry. She had what's called a dead bone. An MRI and an X-ray prove that. That the ball at the top of her arm was completely dead. But even though it was dead, it caused her excruciating pain, like 10 level plus pain. She was scheduled to have a surgery to try to do something to fix it. And even though she had that pain, she could bend her elbow here, but she couldn't raise her arm. So I come up and I said, whoever's 100% healed, come up. She walks up to the stage, looks at me and goes, 100%, and she's bawling. So I call her up, she tells the story. I said, how's the pain now, girl? She goes, no pain. I go, can you move your arm? And she proceeds to throw her arms up and down in a victory stance, and like a thousand but people go crazy. But she can't do that with this. No, no, she, in fact, she canceled the surgery that she was scheduled to have. Sounds good to me. When we return, Katie, they'll break off the spirit of death on your health, mind, family, and finances. Be right back. Call now and get Katie Sousa's brand new book, Be Revived, and her exclusive two-part audio CD teaching series, Speak Life, plus her bonus audio CD teaching, The Power of Communion, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9705. You will receive Katie Sousa's brand new book, Be Revived, Defeat the spirit of death with the power of life. Katie wrote this book to show you how to break death's hold over your life. The book will give you supernatural tools to prepare yourself to physically keep up with the new wine of the revival God is going to pour out upon the earth. We'll show you how to guard yourselves against spiritual attacks on your physical well-being and experience supernatural healing and rejuvenation. Help you walk in God's promises of long-lasting health. Access the biblical promises related to believers having supernatural youth restored even in your advanced years. In suffering from pain, disease, disorders, and physical and mental exhaustion. At the back of the book are scriptures to decree about healing, long life, and restored youth and vitality. Activations and healing commands are included to promote health and restoration, spirit, soul, and body. You will also receive Katie Sousa's exclusive two-part audio CD teaching series, Speak Life. This companion to Katie's anointed book is a soaking prayer series, which will help you obtain your healing no matter which bodily system is afflicted. On disc one, you will be able to follow Katie by taking communion after each healing scripture. It includes anointed background music by Janie Duvall. Then on disc two, you will come into agreement with the explosive commands that will usher in healing for every one of your bodily systems. Plus, you will receive Katie's bonus audio CD teaching, 
The Power of Communion. Don't miss out on getting Katie Sousa's brand new book, Be Revived, and her exclusive two-part audio CD teaching series, Speak Life, plus her bonus audio CD teaching, The Power of Communion, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9705. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9705 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. All right, Sid Roth here talking with Katie Sousa. And uh, this is ridiculous, Katie. Yeah. A lady shook off the spirit of death? Oh, yeah. I actually, Tell me I actually took it off her through the power of God. Her name was Marilyn. I'm in a meeting. Um, I'm taking questions from people afterwards. She stands in back of me waiting in line, and she tugs on my shirt finally to get my attention. I turn around and I said, what can I do for you? She said, I am dying. And I looked at her and she was right. Sid, she looked just like the man in Job 33. Her bones were sticking out. Her flesh was clinging to her body. She was gray. Her hair was sparse. She did look like she was literally at death's door. Then she began to explain how she had radon poisoning and also mold poisoning and how the doctors had treated her, but she could never recover. She said, I'm weak. I can't drive. I can't get myself ready. I barely want to eat. Nothing satisfies me. She goes, I know I'm dying. As she's telling me the story, said, I see a vision in my mind. I see a vision of me grabbing hold of her and violently shaking her while commanding the spirit of death to come out. Now, I don't recommend this for the audience. Okay. They have to have a word of knowledge before they do it. So I said to her, I said, well, I just saw myself something doing something kind of violent to you. Are you okay with that? And she goes, yeah. Yes, I came here to get healed. And I'm like, all right. So I grabbed her and I shook her violently while commanding the spirit of death to come out. She goes down for the count on the ground. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I heard her. I heard her. And she's bawling. And I'm like, oh my. So now I'm decreeing life, life. Be filled with life, every organ, every part of your body. And she finally stops crying. And I go, okay, what happened? And she doesn't look at me. She looks at her daughter and says, did you see that? And her daughter goes, no, what? She goes, that big black puff of smoke that came out of me. And her daughter looks at me and I'm like, you just got delivered of the spirit of death. She leaves, the next day I'm up on stage, I get back down and a beautiful polished looking woman, perfectly coiffed, hair, makeup, walks up to me and says, hi, and I go, Marilyn? She looked completely different, Sid. She said, I woke up this morning, I could get myself ready, I drove us all here to the church. She said, I walked faster across the parking lot than all my family. She goes, I stood and opened the door for every single person going into the church this morning, going, look, I couldn't do this before. Look, I couldn't do this before. She said, I stood up in front and danced wildly during worship. You didn't even recognize me. I was right in front of you, Katie. I'm like, oh my God. She goes, I ate all my lunch. She was completely healed. Then I saw her again, like six months later. Her husband came up on stage with her. He's bawling saying, I thought I was gonna lose my wife. I knew she was healed the moment she called me that night. She didn't even tell me. She just said, hello, darling. And she was totally healed and has been healed since. Something you touched on, worship. Yes. Talk a little. That's so important. Talk a little bit about that. Well, Caleb was an 85-year-old in a 45-year-old's body because he was from the tribe of Judah, which means praise. I believe he praised his way through his life. And this is important. The Bible talks about worship, being able to, to remove spirits in our life. You know the scripture that says that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against powers, rulers, principalities? That word wrestle there means to vibrate. The way we wrestle, even with the spirit of death and other principalities and powers, is to vibrate, is to worship. Even when you sing, you can put your hand on your throat or your chest, you can feel your body uh, vibrate. How do you worship? I, you know what, I worship in many different ways, but I like to first open my Someone mouth Someone that's sing. not a worshiper, give okay. them some quick practical Okay, advice. they need to find a song they love that just mm -hmm. touches their heart. Turn it on and no matter how you sound, open your mouth and vibrate. 
celebrate. Open your mouth and sing. Sing to the Lord because that's going to wrestle, shake off those demonic powers, including death. And then after you do that and you feel the peace of the Lord come, then you can lay down and rest in that worship. You can begin to praise Him out loud or praise Him in tongues, your, your, your language, or just be quiet and still. Be still and know that I am God, you know, that scriptures say. I, so I worship in many different ways. I also worship just by reading the scriptures. That's a form of worship. I worship by taking communion. That's a form of worship. There's all these ways where we can bring our worship unto the Lord. And when we do that, the presence comes. The Bible says that when the presence comes, the glory comes. And that we are transformed into His image, into His likeness, from glory to glory. That happened to Jesus. When Jesus was up on the Mount of Transfiguration, which is where that word transformed comes from, it says there a glory cloud overshadowed him. And it says his appearance suddenly underwent a change. Hmm. So as we worship and the glory comes, our appearance, our physical appearance, Sid, our body, our, our organs, our muscles will undergo a physical change. We will be transformed into his image. But it all starts by surrendering mm. to, the God, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the only option that is left on earth, and that's the Messiah of Israel, mm. Jesus. Say this prayer out loud. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I turn from my sins. I ask the blood of Jesus to wash every bad thing I've ever done away. And I am clean. And now that I'm clean, come and live inside of me. I make you not just my Savior, but my Lord. Amen. Katie, mm. pray that that corporately, that spirit of death is going to leave people right mm. now. Amen. Just right now in your home, just say, Lord, if there's any Lord, sin in me, any sin I, repent I repent of my law breaking. I repent so that my charges, so that my charges, that the enemies brought against me, that the enemies brought of law breaking, of law will be dismissed. Will be dismissed. And death will have to back off. And death will have to back of my body, of my body, my finances, my finances, my marriage, my marriage, my children, my children, and every part of my life. And every part of and my life. And I decree. And I decree that I'm under grace. And I'm under grace. It's building a divine protection over me. It's building a divine protection over me. Because where my sins of law breaking increase. Because where my sins of law breaking increase. Grace increases the more and grace. super abounds over it. Grace increases the more and super abounds over now, it. Now just stay there right now and, and I want you to just receive. Thank you Lord. I decree that a hedge of the blood and a divine protection of grace is over everyone watching right now and I command you spirit of death right now you come out. You come out of their body. You come out of their finances. You come out of their ministry. You come out of their marriage. You come out of their children. You come out of their household. You come out of every single organ. Now lay your hands on that organ. Lay your hands on that place in your body. Lay your hands on your face and your skin, wherever death is attacking you right now. And say with me, come out death. Come out death. And I release the spirit of life into you. Life. As death you have to evacuate, the spirit of life is coming in to cause new cells to grow, new skin to grow, organs to be refreshed and made healthy again, for your bank account to grow, for your marriage to blossom and be filled with life. Death, you come out in life, you come in right now in the name of Jesus. I bind death and I loose life into every place you need it right now in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, now, now receive life. Now receive life, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And God says, it is finished. Thank you, Lord.